Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Nancy and this is my channel, 80s, 90s fun. Welcome. Today we're going to talk about sweet secrets. I have started making these videos because I was recently reunited with my childhood belongings when my parents moved and I had to look up the value of the toys that I decided to try to sell. And in doing that, I thought it was interesting enough that it was worth making some videos about. So that's how this all got started and I hope you'll follow along for the ride. So I started to research Sweet Secrets because I had a set that I wanted to sell. And I thought, okay, I'll do a video about Sweet Secrets. No big deal. There are tons, tons of these. So I was, I was blown away and I definitely spent more time than I thought I was going to uh, looking at all these different products that were offered throughout the years. Sweet secrets, always something new, hiding inside for you. I actually just watched like a whole <laughs> compilation of the commercials and it brought back a lot of memories. Um, the commercials, a lot of them say the same thing as the kind of tagline for it. It's beautiful jewelry to everyone else, but it turns into playthings when you're by yourself. So the whole thing was that they were advertising it towards these, towards these little girls kind of like, oh, you're wearing this jewelry and everyone compliments you on it, but you know, it's your secret that you're actually playing with dolls when no one's looking. So in half the commercials, it's like someone sneaks up on them and they're like, oh, oh no, they almost found out my secret, my secret dolls, when really it's a jewelry box or they think it's just a comb, but actually it's my doll. That is the whole premise behind the, the toy line is that like the commercials were very much like, oh, it's like nobody actually knows what you're doing with this thing because they just think it's this beautiful gem or they think it's a comb uh, but really it's like an entire uh workout gym or it's actually a hair salon or <laughs> i don't know it's good stuff the names of these characters i mean the the way that some of them looked just cracked me up so I'm going to share as much of that as I can. Um, there's other videos on YouTube of people sharing their collections and kind of taking them apart and showing you how they all work. I'm not going to go through that. Um, there's other places that you can find that. Here's the origin story of Sweet Secrets. Once upon a time, not so very long ago, a light shone in the sky and appeared to grow and grow. It came from a secret world, not so very far away, where beauty transformed everything in a quite amazing way. A blaze of twinkling stars sprinkled sweet secrets on the ground, and now you can discover the magic that abounds. Shiny and her jewelry friends have brought a transforming world to you, a world of secret beauty that will make you feel brand new. Sweet secrets live in all kinds of things like watches, charms, and even swings. Now discover Sweet Secrets Makeup too, a magical toy that can transform you. So here's a little bit about Sweet Secrets. Sweet Secrets was introduced by Louis Galoob Toys, otherwise known as Galoob, in 1984. The Sweet Secrets toy line consisted of characters and there are accompanying accessories and play sets that could be converted into different shapes and uses by folding or unfolding parts of the toys. They were sold in the US, UK, and other parts of Europe, and there were at least three name iterations depending on the region. So in the UK and the US, they were called Sweet Secrets. In Italy, they were called Dolce Segreti. In French, they were called magic secrets. The products included charms of people, animals, and babies, cosmetics, jewelry, stationery, bags and purses, and then the play sets. They were manufactured by Galoob from 1984 to the mid-1990s, and the later sets were also released by Blue Box Toys. So more recently, in 2007, a company called Play Along Toys re-released Sweet Secrets, but as tiny dolls that could fit into lipstick tubes and change purses. 
So the tagline on the packaging actually said, it's an adorable, transformable world. So they were definitely trying to cash in on that Transformers kind of vibe, but for girls. So here's something interesting that I haven't really seen many people talk about. This is from the book called The History of Girls Comics by Susan Brewer. So in that book, she says, typical of a toy related comic was Sweet Secrets based on the range of toys of the same name in 1987. Produced by the Colorful Comic Company for Rainbow Toys, this comic was colorful and glossy with an adventure starring the Sweet Secrets characters told in a picture strip. It contained details of the Sweet Secret Club and also an offer for free sweets in conjunction with various sweet shops. Okay, so that's really interesting. Also, I tried really hard to find a picture of any kind of this comic strip. I could not find one. So I would be really curious to see what a comic strip based on a toy actually ends up looking like. What do you think? Should we look at some pictures of this crazy toy line? I think so. Okay, first off, there's the charms. There were four series of charms released. The first series was produced from 1984 to 1987. They were three dolls. They came with a necklace and a hair clip and the doll attached to both those things. There was flashy with the purple hair, gleamy with the red hair, and shiny with the yellow hair. And regardless of the body color, the hair color didn't change. There was a second series. Six more dolls were released in three different gem styles, but the body color never changed. And there were no rosy cheeks or bows in the hair. Came with a necklace and hair clip again. This is where the company Blue Box also started producing these same six dolls. And they produced them, but under different names. The character names in this one, uh, Galoob's was Crystal Bright to Blue Box's Sparkle Heart. Galoob's Dazzle was also Blue Box's Starbeam. Galoob Glitter Miss was Blue Box's Shimmer. Galoob Shimmer was actually Blue Box's Crystal Bright. Not confusing at all, no. Um, Galoob's Sparkle Heart was Blue Box's Dazzle. The third series of charms, 1987 to 1989. Off-center gems and squiggly patterns, the dolls and the animal characters were in three different body shapes. They came with an elastic bracelet, a necklace, and a hair clip. Okay, these characters' names, Curly Heart, Lavendilly, Pinker, Cool Cat, Jazzy Bear, and Mod Dog. The fourth series was released around 1988. It had a very different look than the previous charms did. There were Rockin' Lockets, Rockin' Radios, and Jewelry Charms. Okay, the Rockin' Lockets were shaped like dolls, but they were all holding different musical instruments. Um, it played electronic music, and it could be worn as a bracelet or a necklace. There was Beat a Drum, Strum a Guitar, and tickle a keyboard. Look at the close-up of this one. It's like she and Sid Vicious used to hang out a lot. Rockin' radios. There were three different radios produced. They were working FM radios operated by batteries and they transformed into a stage for the doll to perform. They could also be worn as a necklace. The jewelry charms. Um, <laughs> these make me laugh, I don't know why. Awesome girl, picture perfect girl, Far Out Girl, Hot Girl, Rad Monkey, Your Special Pony, Sweetheart Puppy, and Hot Shot Kitty. All right. All right, so there were also animals, and that was from 1985 to 1994. Not all the characters were available in every year's catalog, and there were new variations and colors introduced. So the original series, these were the names, Cat Trina, Kimmy Koala, Mac the Mouse, Pinky Panda, Pretty Puppy, Star Jumper, Tutu Toucan. Lock and Buy Babies. There were six produced. They were play sets with a smaller gem that was the baby character. So there was one called Go Going Strolling and that turned into a stroller. Hi There turned into a high chair. Night Night Baby turned into a crib. 
Play With Me turned into a playpen, Pony Ride turned into a rocking horse, and Swing Me turned into, yes, a swing set. There was also a gigantic play set that was the twin nursery, and it started out, I still can't believe this, it started out as a telephone, and then it turned into this huge nursery play area that had multiple parts to it. Are you starting to understand yet why I got so overwhelmed when I decided to research this? But wait, there were also cosmetics. Circa 1988, there were uh, blush, lip gloss, nail polish, cologne, lipstick, eyeshadow, uh, there were compacts, there were vanity play sets. Don't forget, also jewelry. There were four jewelry sets produced. There were beauty bows and beauty bracelets and dangles. So I immediately was like, what the heck are dangles? Dangles had key ring like loops, which could be hooked to the plastic chain included with them, forming a bracelet or necklace. They were first sold separately in 1986, then included free with either a doll or animal charm on a blister pack. Okay, dangles, sure. The fourth line of jewelry were switch watches produced in 1986. But wait, there's also stationery. Where are you going? There's more. Okay, so there was a whole series of stationery. Um, one called Pins and Friends. That was like a notebook that opened up into a room and the pen was actually the animal. There were stationery charms. So they turned into dolls or animals, but they were like office supplies. So <laughs> trying to get kids excited about office supplies, right? So there was a pen, a pencil, a tape measure, an eraser, an ink stamp, and alligator scissors, of course. There were also stationary play sets. So there were three sets, design and draw art studio, boutique and shoe store, and designer stamp shoe store. But wait, I'm not done. There were bags and purses. So purse pals, I watched the commercial for this. They're stuffed animals inside of a drawstring bag. So the commercial was three girls sitting at, I guess, a soda fountain. And the, the guy that worked behind the counter was like, hey, I like those bags, ladies. And they were like, thanks. Shh. But there was also Pika Pouch that were these like shimmery coin purses. Um, there were six, two dolls, a cat, a puppy, and a pony available for that. And, all right, play sets. The vanity play sets, there was a brush slash car set, a comb slash bed set, a mirror slash vanity set, and then fashion play sets, a hair dryer slash patio set, a picture frame slash swimming pool set, and a purse play park set. And then there's the large ones, and I think I talked about this already, but beauty tunes, workout time, and jewelry box dollhouse. So workout time was a clock that turned into a gym, a pretty impressive gym at that. So you know what? Good for them. Um, Beauty Tunes was like a jukebox and the commercial showed the girl like rocking out to it on her way into the house. And then they open it up and it's a beauty parlor. Sure. And bonus product, this super cool vest to keep all your sweet secrets in. I'll tell you a little bit of a backstory about Galoob as a toy company. Louis Galoob Toys was founded in 1957 by Louis Galoob and his wife, Barbara Galoob, as a small distributor of toys and stationery. Galoob's first toy success was the reintroduction of a battery powered Jolly Chimp, a simple banging monkey toy that nodded its head when activated. That sounds like a horror movie. The company was incorporated in 1968 and was headquartered in South San Francisco, California. They are perhaps best known for creating micro machines, which accounted for 50% of its sales in 1989. So Galoob is no longer with us. They closed their doors in 1998. They sold off their properties and their brand. In September of 1998, uh, the American toy company Hasbro purchased Galoob for $220 million. So today, Galoob is actually a Hasbro brand name. 
The name began appearing on retail products starting in 2005. The more you know. So I may have mentioned also that Blue Box also began to manufacture and release the Sweet Secrets toys in later, later series, later releases. So I'll tell you a little bit about Blue Box as well. Not as much information about them online. Blue Box was founded in 1952 by Mr. Peter Chan Pui, I hope I didn't butcher that name, who is today the company chairman. Blue Box produces a broad range of toys covering infant and preschool, boys, girls electronic, and collectibles. Blue Box presently operates four manufacturing plants located in the southern part of China with access to convenient transportation and modern shipping ports. It does indicate in various websites that Blue Box released the toys alongside the Galoob toys. I'm going to go ahead and, and assume that they were licensed to create these toys. So I'm guessing it's just for the ability to further distribute the toys that they were also giving the licensing to Blue Box. But I just think it's interesting because at least for me coming from an apparel background, um, usually if you're licensing your product, it's because you're giving it to another company that can manufacture something like a different line that maybe you wouldn't otherwise have produced. So you're expanding your portfolio by having another company manufacture something that you can't or you don't have that strength. But this is the original one that I was looking up so that I could sell it. It's the flashy, it's the flashy. She's got the purple hair and she flips out of her little jewelry thing. Super cute. This also came with the bed set that actually also turns into a comb. And it also came, it came with a barrette. As it turns out, in case you were curious, this was from the first series of dolls. And the reason I know that is because um, the original series had little blush cheeks and bows in their hair. Now hers are not the original bows. They were actually these little pink felt bows. I'm actually going to give you guys a list of all the references, the links, for everything that I looked at to make this video. There was a lot. <laughs> I'll probably post it in the description of the video just so you can copy paste it. But anyway, the other thing is that the main source really seems to be for even for any of the other people that are writing blogs or articles about these toys, the main source that they reference is ghostofthedoll.co.uk. Now that site is run by a woman named Sarah. And the whole reason that she started her website was that she had a toy collection and she was trying to sell it in the early 2000s. And just didn't, there was not a lot of information online about it. So she started the website as she began to pull research and try to figure out again what they're worth, which is how I got into this in the first place. Anyway, that is probably the most comprehensive source. Other websites, even though I looked through them and looked for any other kind of additional information I could pull, they all do reference that Ghost of the Doll website. I think that's all I've got today. Did you guys have fun? Did you learn anything? I hope so. That's the whole point of this. If you're having fun listening to me and you wanna check out more, Make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's 80s, 90s fun. And I also have an Instagram called 80s, 90s fun. If you are interested in checking out what I do have for sale, I have posted the link in the description of my channel.